Hi, I'm Laszlo with Quality Mobile RV and welcome to RVTube. Today we're going to be going over RV refrigerator maintenance tips. Alright, the first thing that we're going to do once we get the cover off, I always inspect, especially yearly, you want to make sure that the uh, gas flue is clean. So the first thing you want to do is you that has a um, little eyelet that you can look in there, but I always take the uh, bolt off here so that you can actually see how dirty it is. And this little tray gets in the way, so we're going to take that off real quick. Alrighty, set that aside. Okay, now what we're mainly doing is just pulling this back away. A lot of times, especially in cold weather, mud daubers like to accumulate right on the burner tube there. So we do have a little bit of debris, and that's where I would basically take some compressed air. If you're at the house, you can use a leaf blower or anything that can get you some kind of air to clean that out there. Um, basically, you want to make sure that everything is clean and running fine. You can put all this back together. The second thing that I want to show you is this is your, your drain tube. This is where all the condensation is going to come down. You want to make sure that this line, this one's kind of plugged up. So you want to clean that off real good. And also the tray, which I've got down here. As you can see, all the debris that collects in the tray. I've got a little spider in there. And uh, basically, you can clean that out with any household cleaner and install that back. Always make sure that this line is inside the cup because that's where this is going to collect the water. If it's sitting outside the cup and just hanging there, you're going to get water throughout the underside of your refrigerator uh, subfloor and that's going to eventually rot away. The next thing I wanted to pay attention to, this specifically has what we call a TCO, it's a thermal cutoff switch and it's newer, it's in all the newer models. So if you ever have a refrigerator that just all of a sudden turns off and it gives you an NOCO code or you're having any trouble, the first thing you want to do is pull the cover off and take a look here. If you look here right now, the light is in the off. Right now it's not illuminated, so that's good. If you ever see this light right here illuminated, the, the, it's a very simple fix. Um, basically, you can take any magnet. You can go to O'Reilly's and get the little pickup magnet. I have this big, huge magnet I keep on my truck just for handy things, but the trick to resetting this and not having to call a service center to come out, spend, 75 to 150 bucks to literally spend about 45 seconds on your coach. So what we're going to do is imagine that the light is on. So right now the thermal cutoff would be showing this light bright and glowing. So what we're going to do is take the magnet and you can take any magnet that's strong enough to do this and you hold the magnet directly over the light about that position right there. Now what will happen is it says in the book it takes up to two minutes. Hold this magnet there until you hear a click and the light goes off. Once that happens, you can go back inside and you can turn the refrigerator back on and you're actually up and running. And that's all it was is showing that the refrigerator got too hot and it has thermally cut itself off to keep from anything happening such as a fire or it just getting too hot and ruining any components. Um, if that happens more, then about three times you know, in a year, you definitely want to take it in and get it looked at because then there's an actual another issue why this refrigerator is getting hot. Another tip I wanted to show you guys is basically this is a cutoff valve. A lot of people don't realize this tiny little button, if it's not in the horizontal position, is actually cutting the gas off. And it's as easy as that right there. I had a customer, this is now in the off position. I had a customer say that they were working fine on LP, somebody was messing around with the fridge, now they can't get it to light. I literally showed up, found this in the off position, turned it on, and the refrigerator lit right up and there was nothing wrong, but just pay attention to this thing right here and make sure it's in a horizontal position. Also another tip I wanted to tell you guys is, this is basically the control board for the refrigerator, and if you ever have to where the power goes out, if you pull these screws off here, they're quarter inch screws. Uh, of course you want to always unplug, which the plug is way back here. So you're going to unplug the 110 so that you're safe there. You also have your positive and negative for your 12 volt here. You're going to pull these off here one at a time. Just be careful not to destroy the board when you're pulling that off. Then once you get the cover off, you've got two fuses inside. You just want to check those two fuses for continuity. You could literally just have a fuse busted in here and that's why your refrigerator isn't working. So be ready to check those if you ever have any problems where the fridge won't turn on. This is the first place you need to start. Okay, I just want to go over a couple pointers. If you are going to be going camping on a weekend, say Saturday, you do want to plug in your refrigerator on Thursday to shore power. 
because these refrigerators take 12 to 24 hours to get completely cold to where you can have you know ice in the freezer and drink staying cold and you want to make sure that you give yourself plenty of time that way if there's any issues you can find out before you leave but it'll get it to the proper operating temperature and then whenever you're ready to leave you can just uh, unplug it turn it over to gas and then head out to your camping trip all right guys that's it for today if you have any other video ideas please submit them right here in the app and thank you for watching rv2